Citra reached a major turning point when it embraced Vulcan. Ever since then, its performance has progressed considerably. And now, overall performance ranks among the best of all emulators. It's lost a bit of relevance since some 3DS games have been ported to the Nintendo Switch, but there's still plenty of exclusives to go around. Just something you need to be aware of. The compatibility list is woefully out of date. So, many games that are marked as unplayable are actually fully playable now. That's not to say every game is problem-free all of a sudden. Castlevania Mirror of Fate had severe issues. I don't even know how to describe it, except to say it looks extremely jerky. Driver Renegade's frame rate mostly hung around in the low teens, which makes it nigh unplayable. Harvest Moon, a new beginning, fluctuated between 20 and 30 frames. I consider it an okay experience, since it's not the type of game that requires a high frame rate, but other people might disagree with me. Kirby Planet Robobot has a flashing texture glitch. At first, I thought it was just the shaders caching, but when I replayed it, the issue repeated again. And this won't be the last game to have this problem. It may be a bit unfair to include Kid Ikurus Uprising here, because it technically works perfectly. However, when you're running on the ground, the motion controls can be awkward. It's not the emulator's fault, but it's something you need to know. Luigi's Mansion, Dark of the Moon, was supposed to run at 60, but could barely maintain 30. But this wasn't the only problem, since textures popped in and out at regular intervals. Minecraft was almost fine, except for specific areas where lighting didn't work properly. For example, underground caverns were pitch black, which made traversal impossible. The same happened when I went underwater. Monster Hunter 3 runs in slow motion. However, you can use a cheat to lock the frame rate at 30, which will completely fix the issue. After that, the game will run normally. Monster Hunter Stories didn't run in slow motion, but it did have low performance issues. Locking it at 30 solved the problem as well. In case you're interested, I'll include the codes below for your convenience. Both Pac-Man Ghostly Adventures games struggled with performance. Nothing more needs to be said. Resident Evil Revelations has the same texture flickering problem as Kirby. Apart from that, it seems to run at full speed, so it is technically playable. Rodia, the Sky Soldier, was running at a constant 20 frames. I'm not sure if this is the same on original hardware, although it's highly doubtful. Anyway, you can kind of play it, but it's best on Dolphin emulator. Star Fox 64 was running in the low 20s. It was fine for the most part, and there were no glitches, but it's not enjoyable with such poor performance. I don't know what it is with Street Fighter 4, but it just looks very jittery, especially when there are special effects on the screen. It can't be because of performance because the game is running at a locked 30, so clearly something else is causing the issue. All right, I'm done being a Debbie Downer, so it's time to move on to the playable games. DJ, start the music, please.